Hi everyone, Senior Blood and Iron Instructor Stephen Keim here. Today, we're going to go back to Sword and Buckler and show you some ways you can improve your buckler control. One issue you're going to notice with the buckler has to do with its distance from my body. As my arm gets fatigued, my body's going to want to withdraw the arm to a more comfortable position to alleviate the strain. The problem with this is now I'm more exposed with a smaller cone of defense. I'm susceptible to a number of incoming attacks now. I can mitigate this, however, with drilling and training to make my arm stronger. Now, for this first drill, we're going to start with our arm at full extension in our cone of defense. And without using a sword, I'm going to practice opening the door as if I was throwing a cut, using my arm and finger strength to manipulate the buckler in this fashion. Now, after a while, your arm is going to get fatigued. And this is the important part. You want to maintain this drill as much as possible because now you're working your arm's endurance in order to build up strength. Now, important safety tip. Don't lock the elbow joint when you're doing this drill. Doing so puts undue stress on the joint and not on the muscles and you'll gain no benefit from doing this. For this next drill, we're going to include the sword. I position the sword here as if I've just finished throwing a cut. And this is where it's going to stay. I'm going to use my finger and my arm strength on my buckler to maneuver it around the sword, keeping my buckler as close to the weapon as possible. Just like with the previous drill, if my arm gets tired, I don't want to retract it because this is the point where I build up strength. For the final drill, we are going outside on this beautiful day to demonstrate using the Pell. For this drill, we are going to start in ward number two with the blade on my shoulder and I am going to throw a cut at the Pell, focusing on manipulating my buckler as we did in the first drill to give me the best cutting angle. As with previous drills, we are keeping the buckler at full extension at all times. Once a cut is complete, we will return to ward number two, traveling through ward number six, located by the sword side at the hip. After each cut at first, you are going to want to check to make sure your sword and buckler are not too far apart and that your hand does not extend beyond the rim of the buckler. For a more advanced version, add some dynamic motion. Move around as if you were sparring and throw the cuts while moving in and out of your target's threatened area. For best results, have a training partner observe your motion and inform you of any errors you have while performing the drill. Alternatively, you can record yourself performing the drill and review it at a later time for corrections. We hope you enjoyed today's video on getting to know your buckler. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, a big thanks to our Patreon subscribers for their continued support. We couldn't do it without you. If you enjoy the content that we present, feel free to check out one of our live online classes by clicking the link below. And as I always like to say, if you train how you fight, then you'll fight how you train.